that is the hypocrisy that we've been living with for quite a while now in this country. But take a look at this. Um, this is this is the uh, the Pra River, the Chifopraso Bridge. We went on that bridge. There was a drone that was flown, so you see the extent of the damage we're seeing. Ah, this is the Pra River. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the level of pollution. Yeah, yeah. For, for the benefit of those listening on radio, if you've ever drunk Milo, hmm, that's how it looks like. This is worse than Milo. It's worse, eh? This is polluted. <laughs> this how? Pra River, it goes all the way. And the residents, the residents living along have no choice than to, in fact, we have a video of a child drinking this. So they say they put um, alum in it. It settles. And then. But, but the chemicals that I'm have gone in you, don't settle. Yeah. This, that is what they are living with because they don't have any other source of water. Because there are some areas, Ghana water doesn't provide water to those places. So this is what they have to live on. This polluted. River. No, no, into it cannot yeah. be business as usual from where we are getting to now. Ghana Water Company says just about 40% of the water that they can actually treat and make available to us in our homes because a number of the water bodies have been polluted. They say the, the less polluted river in this country is the Volta River. Mm -hmm. That's less polluted. Not the and, the, and the Oti, Oti, Oti River. And that's your not, area. Yeah. Oti. Mm. That is the only one. Mm. Yeah. Well, Alfred, I mean, clearly, uh, Ghana is faced with a crisis situation. And uh, when some of us speak <laughs> with a bit of passion and conviction, they say, oh, you are emotional. Mm -hmm. This is not an emotional situation we are faced with. This is absolute crisis. And... I am actually at my wit's end uh, in trying to understand how the people in government will not be ashamed, but feel proud and confident to campaign and to tell Ghanaians, vote for us to continue because we have served you well, because we did free SHS. And now, if you create a free school in the Chufuprasu area, and this is the water that the children in the Chufuprasu area have to drink, how long will they live <laughs> to even to benefit, benefit from, your from the education that you've given them? It's absolute nonsense. It's absolute rubbish. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about our lives as a nation and talk about the responsibilities of leadership. And I'm happy Honorable Kofi Adam spoke about leadership and the failure of leadership. The evidence of failure of leadership in Ghana today mm -hmm. is humongous. Mm -hmm. Every single aspect of our lives you go to open to discuss, there's a crisis. And people in MPP, people in political circles, people in political parties who want to be voted want Ghanaians to behave as if all of us are stupid. And they are the wisest people. They are the people who know everything because they have political power. I don't think so. I think it's my friend Martin who said, the fact that you become a political leader doesn't suddenly make you wise. Mm, yeah. And make you suddenly knowledgeable <laughs> more than everybody sure. else, yeah. simply because you have power today. Yeah. So tomorrow, if you leave office, then you also become stupid. Yeah like all of us who are not in power. But really, that's not the point. Alfred, this matter of Galamsey, I have said it, and I will preface my submission with that statement again. The other time, when people watch me on Unia TV, they say it was too emotional. Oh, you were perfect. No. It's not oh, emotional. Said, oh, ignore it. Ah. So, no, no, so no, no, now no. I have tried, <laughs> oh, no, and no, no, I would no, deliberately... No. No, I, yeah, I, let me bring I, this. No, a philosopher the once said that. The thing just hit me. The thing just hit me. You are corrupt. Please, the there's thing, nothing like emotional. The thing hit me so hard, ah. and now I want to go non-emotional. But oh. let me repeat the same words. If 
MPP wins this upcoming election under the current circumstances of corruption, of galamse, and of economic mismanagement and hardships, Ghanaians are finished. They will never respect Ghanaians anymore. They will become more and more impudent and brazen in whatever the arrogance of power will be totally uncontrollable. Yeah. We'll flee. And we'll flee I am repeating <laughs> it. I am not by this statement saying NDC clear, obviously is the better choice. I believe we need an independent. But we are talking about the people who have their hands on the levers of power today. The other time I said the president is not a man of honor and somebody said I had insulted him. I have not insulted him. I am saying it again. President well, Okufuado is not a man of his word. He's not a man of his word. One, one. Mm -hmm. He told Alan Chemate mm -hmm. at Legon, 2007, mm -hmm. once I become president and I'm leaving office, I will support you, I will help you. Mm -hmm. He has done the very opposite. Thank you. And you done everything to undermine Alan Chemate's effort, first of all, to become candidate for MPP, secondly, to become president that's, of Ghana. That's a conversation we can have. No, no, that's a, but I'm telling you what I know. Wait, 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 let me speak, let me speak, let me speak. Secondly, the, the and the leave. biggest one, the biggest one <laughs> is this Galamse matter. That if I am not able to fight Galamse, I will be ready to put my presidency down. The president has failed to fight Galamse. He has failed to put his presidency down. He is not a man of his word. He is not a man of honor. Mm -hmm. This is not an insult. If you consider this an insult, well, I'm sorry about that. If anybody considers this an insult, then we are not ready to live mm -hmm. with principles in this country. We will live with sentiments and boot licking. And it will get us deeper into the mess that we find ourselves. If a president says, this evil of Galamse is so bad, I commit my life to it. I commit my presidency to it. Is it just a matter of just telling us words? I'll come to the substantive matter. Now, I heard this story about drip equipment, and there is a fight over them in one of the OT constituencies. Equipment that have been brought recently by the government to try and help improve rural roads. They call it District efforts. Road Improvement Project. Mm -hmm. They send a lot of uh, bulldozers and excavators or whatever, root construction equipment. First of all, for me, it is one of the things that governments or political parties do just to insult the people. This government has been around for eight years. Three months to election. You send equipment to go and level out rough roads just to let the people feel that their roads are being done. My hometown, Manfitu Latte, Later to Ayukuma. For the longest while, it's been totally unmutterable. A few weeks ago, two, three days ago, one week ago, two weeks ago, they put machines there. They are trying to, because election is coming. I'm telling you, people at Latte, Nana Siriwoko, you are my senior brother. I should have been sitting on that stool, but we all supported you. you I am telling you, and Nana Jemfra, Latte, Equapim Benkum stool. Equapim Benkum is a divisional stool. You should have been sitting Personally, I could be. The chief, but I opted to go into politics. I see. Yes. Anyway. So I'm speaking directly to my brother, Nana Siduoko, mm -hmm. and Nana Jimfra, and my compatriots in Latte mm -hmm. and Manfi. Mm -hmm. Don't get fooled mm -hmm. because they brought equipment to gravel, grade the road, two months, three months to election. What was happening to our lives all these years? When some of our people went hard to lobby, to beg, I know how much the former GRA boss, Amisha Dai, tried to do. Even when he was the GRA boss and he went and lobbied, they didn't mind him. GRA boss, he goes to lobby for five kilometers, seven kilometer road to his hometown to be made. Nobody minded him. Today, two weeks to election, one month to election, the latter people should vote against MPP. If you vote for MPP, it's up to you. Okay. Why? Why do we allow people in political power to treat us as if we are the scum of the earth when we give the power? Excellent. So anyway, 
Let me come to Galamse again. I've been once to the desert in Mauritania and Libya. And as far as the eye can see, you don't see one green at all. You don't see any green. Apart from the oasis where Gaddafi took us and the oasis where the president of Mauritania at the time took us, once you step out of the oasis and you get, and we drove into the desert proper. Now, after you see that, when we flew back to Ghana and I go down, I see green on the road, even if it's just ordinary bush, it feels like money. It is a feeling that I got. I said, wow. Now, God endows us with all of these resources. And today, Ghana is still considered developing, even poor, overburdened with debt. If you're overburdened with debt, you are a poor country. We are worse than hippie now. And we have destroyed it to the extent that a whole region, now Ghana Water has announced that as for central region, if we don't take care, there will be water crisis. If the crisis hasn't already started. And the reason, Galamse. Well, in fact, they, they put out but, that statement and not to interrupt you, yes, respectfully. Yes. This is how bad the situation yeah, let's, is. Like. Let, yeah. I want to ask you, the, the Chifopraso area, that water flows through to the central area. To but the this, beach. This is it. This is just the summary of the Ghana Water Company statement in central region. The suitable level for the NTU, that's a nephilometric turbidity, it measures the turbidity level. 2,000 yes. NTU. It should have been 2,000. That's the suitable level yeah. of turbidity for them to treat the water. Mm -hmm. Now, guess what? The current level there hmm, is 14,000. And That's this is point. just stability. Yes. They are not talking about the other mm. chemicals, mercury, and all those things that is and in the water. See, if, if water is clean, it doesn't mean there's, there's no there is not, no polluted. Right, right. There's, there's, right. If, if <laughs> this is just stability, the level of yeah. mud, what, let's what, call it simply mud, mm -hmm. at the chest. Over 600% mm. more than what it should be there. Mm. 14,000 mm. nephilometric turbidity is what they are having to deal with. Mm -hmm. So this is the scientific and technical evidence of what is happening on the ground in one region. We don't know about what is happening in Ashanti region and the other areas, eastern region, where Desu also is a source of water for treatment to be used domestically. I mean, those who live in the western part of Accra, yeah. they know that but for a certain arrangement that was done where there is a, a certain kind of a loop where Ghana water takes some of the water from Volta, the Volta Basin. Initially, the arrangement was that, my information was that the water from the, the Volta area used to serve the eastern part of Accra. Mm -hmm. And then the water from Densu would be so used to the serve western. the western part yeah. of Accra. Yeah. And for the whole time, even then, people used to complain about the effects of the use of chemicals in the fishing on the Dinsu River. Yeah. So sometimes when you cross over, my brother lives in the western part, Dansuma area. When you go to Dansuma area and you drink the water, it tastes differently from the water you drink in Cantumens, East Ligon, and the rest of it. So there was an arrangement. I don't know whether engineering-wise I'm speaking the truth, but my information was that there was an arrangement where some of the water from the voter treatment is mixed with the water from the uh, western side so that the water will be uniformed and then the people in the west can get better quality water even at that time efforts were being made to improve the quality of the water mm -hmm. today if the scientists and the technicians are telling us that the water cannot be treated anymore because of Turbidity. It means that very soon, the people in central region, we should make arrangements to import water either from the Volta site or from abroad. <laughs> Go, say, yeah, we have, to, we have to find some dollars. We have to find dollars to import water. And gradually, the way the thing is going, 
if you don't get a government that clearly has the political will, a leader, a person, not a political party, a person, a person, a leader, who would be prepared genuinely to put his presidency on the line? And it's the MPP and the NDC haven't shown that? For me, they haven't, really. You see, because it's now not, they, they haven't. It's not MPP now, and NDC. It's, it's MPP. MPP. It's MPP and DC. Because, you see, now when you take corruption, they are telling you this one is just a little more corrupt than we used to be. When you take Galamse, oh, they pushed it beyond the limit that Kofi Adams was just saying, oh, where we, when we were there, there was Galamse, all right. There was pollution, all right. But now they've taken it to a higher level. When you no, take no, economic no, mismanagement, you to my statement, no, Kofi, no, no, can no, you? No, I just, you. just because you quoted me. Uh, no, if you listen to my statement, I wanted very to clearly. interrupt you then, but no, I decided but no, not. I to. said, oh, even oh, if oh, I oh, want oh, to oh, accept oh, his oh, position, oh, yes. Okay. So you are a journalist, and you know. I was only saying, even if I want to accept, I am not admitting that he was speaking the truth. No, but I am saying that that was the case. So then, don't use me. <laughs> Don't use me to okay. validate, okay. validate okay. the okay. point you okay. want to make. Well, let me even move from, from the environmental thing. And in any case, with the environment, Kofi Adams was talking about green. This Mahama government, Savannah region, the 250 million Ghana cities, also 35 million or so, to go and plant trees. I have the statistics here. Instead of one point something million trees, or 50 million trees, this Sada business, what happened? All the money was paid. It was still an environmental thing. It is all part of this issue. It was a huge scandal. Up to today, there was no tree. The money was paid. It is the environment. That is why I am telling you that we need a different kind of leader now, because when you take Galamsey, we are in crisis. When you take economy, we are in crisis. When you take law, enforcement, governance, we are in crisis. Indiscipline, we are in crisis. Our own mindset as a people, we are in crisis. Now, you cannot talk about mindset change when the leader is not exemplifying a certain kind of change and mentality which is positive. Now, Ghanaians have gotten to the point where the politicians will talk. We'll look at them. If they talk and they'll go and do different things, we'll also do different things. When they come and arrest us, we'll fight the police. And we'll fight the military and we'll kill some of them. Well, well but you see, Nana. No, no, no yeah, I'm telling well, you the attitude, the okay. reaction. I'm yeah, just telling no, you, it's, it's, yes. I just needed it to be clear that yeah. it's not as though you are saying to, to as to were condone or support. No, but I'm so telling you, that is what will what, happen. Oh, that is what is happening. But ah, it is didn't also you? good to say it is not right. Of course, it is not right. But okay. see, I am telling you yes. something. Let's right. not sh shy away from these realities and pretend. You see, you see, people talk about the public responsibility. And it is a very big one. But you see, if you check how democracy works, democracy works by taking the power of the majority of the people and then you concentrate it in one person or a few. Once you have done that, what you have done is that you have basically surrendered the management of your life to the government, at least at the social level. Of course, psychologically, everybody is responsible for their own lives as an individual. But when consistently, just because the people have political power, which you invested in them anyways, they are showing you such impudence, such disrespect, disrespect even for the law that they themselves are supposed to enforce. What are you left with? So that is the point and the perspective from which I am addressing this matter. So we have an issue where, and I don't agree with Kofi Adams that we, uh, environment is not political. Environment is a political matter. In fact, the level of discussion that has made it negative is the partisan MPP-NDC. But environment is a political matter. 
Food is a political matter. Water is a political, everything that has to do with our lives. The negativity now that we're experiencing about how to deal with these issues is the MPP NDC duopoly that has precluded all other level-headed discussions to the extent that now we cannot even talk about food, we can't talk about health, we can't talk about road if it is not MPP NDC. That is where the danger is now. So I am sorry, but I cannot stop returning to the fact that where we are today with Galamse, with corruption, with economic mismanagement, with the arrogance of power, Ghana needs a completely new leader. A leader people can put on the scales, dig deep into his background and check whether this leader can be trusted. Now, uh, Alfred, yeah, quickly, that, 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 on, uh, on Galamse uh, again, look, we are failing to realize that for as long as our economy is not able to provide jobs for young people, our economy is not supporting businesses to employ more people, for as long as our exchange rates and our interest rates are destroying businesses, it's going to be very difficult to fight not just Galamse, but all the other various ills that are plaguing our society now. So therefore, if we are serious about finding a solution to Galamse, I am saying that you need a leader who has a very clear plan. How do you salvage this economy? Not by slogans. Yesterday, mm. somebody raised an issue about 24-hour economy and said it is one of the best things for which Mahama should be voted. And I said, so where are the details and how? You have he talked about, details, eh? I, he spoken about one or two things. I said, look, if you take Alan Chamartin's great transformational plan and you implement the clusters that he has mentioned on economy, agriculture, tourism, you probably will have a 27-hour economy or 30-hour economy. In fact, <laughs> the way the thing is, you don't need to give it a slogan. Just implement something that will turn agriculture around, something that will turn industry, manufacturing around, something that will turn exports around. Immediately, you've dealt with your CD dollar matter. Mm. Okay. Something that you can use as a basis of saying, I will remove this tax. Because you see, when you remove a certain particular tax, you are depriving government of revenue. But you have shown that, as for this tax, this avenue for raising revenue is a nuisance. Let me block it. But this is the other one I'm opening. Now, when you do these things, and you go and tell the farmer that, please, don't cut down your cocoa trees. I am bringing you a new avenue for exporting more cocoa. I will buy your cocoa at a price that makes it sensible and profitable for you to continue to farm. And you can find alternative jobs for young people. You can now tell them, get out of Galamse. Because I saw one video where a gentleman, a young man, had taken a machete mm -hmm. to the throat of a cocoa tree. Yeah, and, uh, and somebody was saying, oh, please. We'll, we'll, we'll play that in a bit. In fact, I have, yeah. I have that video. I sent it to you yesterday. Uh, yes. I don't know yes, whether you, you got did. it from another you, source. You, 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 you actually sent it to Yes, me. I you sent it to you. it from you. you. Yes. Um, we'll, we'll play it, but just so, make your point. Yeah, so, so I thought that after someone I heard in the background speaking to this young man had spoken so much, the young man would have considered. Yes. He said, ah. But the government also, you see, Alfred, that's where I'm telling you, mm -hmm. the people are looking at the behavior of the people in power. <laughs> when you have national executives, regional executives, government officials backing Galamse activities, and the people in the community, they know who they are working for. They know the people they are working for. They know the Chinese who are being backed by people in power. They know. And then you go and tell them, you stop your own. Don't cut down your cocoa tree. Uh, stop Galamse. 
What is the alternative? Well, sorry. Uh, don't worry. Gun, gun, government will find a way. They won't listen. They won't listen. That's what I'm saying is the danger where we are actually moving towards a state of anarchy and chaos where the people out of desperation will not listen to people in government who have no credibility. Okay. People but in government who cannot be trusted. The people right. won't listen to you. Well, that video that you made reference yes. to, and, and, and Zadams, and it, uh, 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 and the Apia Kubi is back on the telephone. I've taken note of a number yes. of things, um, my colleague. This is the video you, 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 you spoke about. Take a look. <laughs> So that's the reality that we are faced with. And that's a cocoa farmer. And in fact, he's not alone in this. You remember almost this is a little over two years ago, my colleague Ibrahim Abubakar. Yeah, I did a story, did a story where yeah, with cocoa this board cocoa followed. Farmer. Yeah. And just to do a quick record, take a look at this. This is what what, what happened I, in that instance. Okay. Government can never stop GLMC in this Ghana at all, at all. At all. I have the gold, I have plenty of money. In my pocket, so I don't mind cuckoo. Look, I'm now cutting it off. You see, it is my own bonifier property. Nobody can stop me to stop cutting my own cuckoo tree. Are you build, are you plant it for me? Plant it for you, food that you are not involved. See, eventually, cuckoo board, after we heard this story, went to talk this farmer out of the. But he was just one out of many. <laughs> uh -huh. A whole constituency uh -huh. of cocoa farmers uh -huh. Alfred. who were doing the same thing and thinking alike and selling off their farms to these illegal miners and it's coming up every now and then.